In this topic video, we're going to be focusing on second degree price discrimination. Price discrimination is where a business charges a different price to different groups of consumers for the same good or service and for reasons not associated with cost. There are three main types of price discrimination, first, second and third degree, and we'll cover each in separate topic videos. But for this time, we're just going to focus on second degree discrimination. And this basically involves a business selling off a package or block of a product, perhaps it's deemed to be at surplus capacity, and selling those blocks off, those big quantities, to consumers at a much cheaper price. So a bulk purchase discount would be a good example. Prices may also vary by time of purchase. And in this video, we'll look at peak versus off-peak pricing. Here's a good example of a quantity discount. Mobile phone tariffs, if you're prepared to pay a top-up £25 in exchange for your allowance, you get a much bigger significant increase in data traffic uh, capacity. So oftentimes with mobile phone tariffs, quantity of texts, minutes of free talk, etc. vary and the unit price comes down. Here's a really good example of second degree from the power industry. Have a look, for example, at the cost or the price per kilowatt hour in pence for selling gas. Very small consumers, typically small businesses, for example, a small restaurant perhaps, they're going to be paying 4.9 pence per kilowatt hour. Whereas your giant industrial firms, partly because they have buying power or monopsony power, they may be able to negotiate down a much bigger discount. And as a result, they're paying less than two pence per kilowatt hour. Second degree discrimination based on the quantity of gas used. In many sectors, there's a strong seasonality in demand. This chart shows the occupancy rate for hotels in the USA, obviously peaking in June and July and falling either side. At off-peak times, where there's plenty of spare capacity, hotels will be looking to sell their spare rooms, perhaps on a last minute standby basis. Of course, in these types of industries, the fixed costs are quite high and the marginal costs are low and predictable. So it makes commercial sense to offer a discount at off-peak times. Have a look at this example from Centre Parks, which shows the weekly cost per lodge or per person per night at various times in January and February. And try and spot the half-term holiday. At peak times, the price will be significantly higher because there's such strong demand from families. If you haven't already spotted it, it looks like those are the two weeks where prices are highest. But notice the week afterwards, the price per lodge collapses below £300. So how do we show peak and off-peak pricing? Here's an analysis diagram to help us. At off-peak times, demand tends to be low and fairly price elastic. And this firm could profit maximise where MR meets MC at an output Q1 and charge at an off-peak price P. What about peak times? Well, at peak times, demand is much higher. You can show this in the diagram. And it's actually more inelastic as well. But the crucial point is the firm at a peak time will sell a higher output, Q2, and it can charge a significantly higher price and clearly make some more money. One justification for this, and I've shown this in my diagram, is that the marginal cost of supply at peak times may be higher. For example, hotels and resorts may have to employ extra staff or pay more overtime when the resorts are full. So this has been a quick look at second degree price discrimination. Businesses selling blocks or packages at cheaper prices or businesses charging different prices at different times. Peak versus off-peak pricing. 